How to use reverse psychology to deal with toxic people, even if they are your family. How to handle destructive criticism from family members. In many families, communication can become an arena of confrontation where words are thrown like darts. Among these, destructive criticisms stand out for their profound impact. These are not mere observations to help you grow, but rather comments that can undermine your self-esteem, especially painful when uttered by those we love the most, our family members. To deal with such criticism, it is crucial to recognize its nuances and the intent behind it. Constructive criticism is delivered with respect and care, while destructive criticism carries a weight of negativity that can leave lasting marks. The first step is to remain calm. Take a deep breath. Count to ten. Do whatever it takes not to react impulsively. Remember, the immediate response is rarely the most effective. An interesting strategy is reverse psychology. By showing that these criticisms do not visibly affect you, you take away the critic's power to influence your emotions. This can be more challenging than it seems, but with practice, it becomes a powerful tool for emotional self-defense. Responding with questions can also be an effective method. For example, if someone says something negative about your behavior, you can ask, what exactly do you suggest I do differently? This puts the ball in the critic's court, forcing them to think about the constructive nature, or lack thereof, of their comment. Superficially agreeing, another useful technique can temporarily disarm the situation. A simple, I understand your point, may be enough to move the conversation forward without escalating it. However, it is vital to establish clear boundaries. If destructive criticism is a recurring pattern, it may be necessary to have an honest dialogue about how these comments affect you and what is acceptable in your future interactions. This requires courage and sometimes the help of a professional mediator. Simultaneously, reaffirm your qualities internally. Keeping a self-reflection journal not only helps monitor your personal growth, but also allows you to distinguish between criticisms that have merit and those that are merely destructive. Celebrate your achievements and remember your strengths by writing about them. Now I ask you, when was the last time you turned a destructive criticism into an opportunity for personal growth? Share your experience in the comments. Dealing with overbearing family members, when family ties turn into chains of control, it can be difficult to breathe freely and assert your independence. Controlling relatives, although often motivated by concern and love, can end up stifling your personal development and autonomy. It is crucial, therefore, to understand how to handle this dynamic without breaking valuable bonds or losing your sense of identity. First, identify the controlling behaviors. This can range from simple decisions, such as criticizing your choice of clothing, to more significant aspects, such as interference in your professional choices or personal relationships. Recognizing these actions is the first step in developing effective coping strategies. Staying calm is essential. When confronted with attempts to control, take a deep breath and approach the situation with a clear mind. Responding with irritation or frustration only fuels the cycle of control and conflict. Reverse psychology can be a useful tool. By superficially agreeing with controlling relatives, you avoid unnecessary conflicts while continuing to make your own decisions independently. This can relieve immediate pressure and give you space to act according to your own will. Establishing clear boundaries is fundamental. Calmly explain why you need to make your own choices and how excessive control is affecting your well-being and personal development. Being assertive about your boundaries is not an act of aggression, but an affirmation of your autonomy. Reaffirming your right to independence is a crucial step. You have the right to live your life on your own terms, and reminding your family and yourself of this is vital to maintaining your self-esteem and personal freedom. 
Using humor to diffuse potentially tense situations can alleviate pressure without causing direct confrontations. A light-hearted approach can open doors to deeper and less defensive dialogues in the future. Finally, engage in activities that reinforce your autonomy. Whether pursuing hobbies you love, taking courses that broaden your horizons, or simply making everyday decisions that reflect your values and desires, each small independent decision is a celebration of your own life. Now, I invite you to reflect and share. How have you managed to establish a healthy balance with a controlling relative? Leave your response in the comments. How to react to sarcastic comments. Sarcastic comments can be a form of humor among friends, but when used negatively, they can become weapons that deeply hurt. In family and social relationships, recognizing and appropriately reacting to these comments is essential to maintaining a healthy and respectful environment. First, it is important to understand the context of these comments. Sarcasm can be a form of veiled criticism or simply a light-hearted way of joking. Recognizing the intention behind the sarcasm is crucial. When you realize that the use is negative and intended to hurt or diminish, keeping your composure becomes your first line of defense. Using reverse psychology is an effective strategy. By responding neutrally, as if the sarcastic comment did not have the intended impact, you disarm the situation. For example, if someone says, wow, you're so fast, in a clearly sarcastic tone about something that took you a long time to do, responding with a simple, thank you, I try, can turn the tables, showing that you are not affected by the criticism. Turning sarcasm into something positive is an art. If possible, use the comment to create an opportunity for constructive dialogue. You could say, I really took my time with that, didn't I? Let's see how I can improve. Turning a negative critique into a chance for growth. Strengthening your self-esteem is vital. Internally reinforce your qualities and remember your capabilities. Keeping a gratitude or achievement journal can help build a shield against the corrosive effects of sarcastic comments. Additionally, it is important to focus on constructive conversations. Avoid getting into sarcasm games as they can lead to a cycle of negativity and resentment. Choose to engage in dialogues that promote mutual understanding and respect. Lastly, strengthen relationships with people who genuinely respect and value your presence. Cultivate friendships and family bonds with those who support and encourage you, creating a positive support network. Now, reflect and share. When was the last time you turned a sarcastic comment into a positive opportunity? How did this affect your relationship with the person who made the comment? Leave your response in the comments. Maintaining calm in family discussions. Family discussions are common, but when they become intense, they can cause stress and lasting resentment. The key to handling these situations without losing your composure lies in adopting effective communication and emotional control techniques. First, breathing techniques can be a great ally. Deep breathing helps oxygenate the brain, calming the mind and allowing you to respond more rationally. Before responding in a discussion, try taking a deep breath and counting to three, giving yourself time to formulate a considered response. Using reverse psychology can also be helpful. By partially agreeing with the other person, even if you don't fully agree, you can help calm things down. For example, if a family member criticizes something you did, you can respond, you're partly right, I could have done that differently. Let's find a solution together. Maintaining a calm tone of voice is crucial. Raising your voice only creates more tension and resistance. Speak calmly and clearly to convey your ideas in a way that others are more receptive to listening rather than preparing to counterattack. Taking pauses to reflect during a discussion is also important. If you feel the conversation is getting too heated, suggest a short break. This gives everyone a moment to cool off and consider the other's perspective. 
Use phrases that diffuse tension. Expressions like, I understand your point of view, or this is important to you, isn't it, can show empathy and a willingness to understand, rather than just win the argument. Establishing an environment of mutual respect is essential. Make it clear that even in disagreement, respect for others' opinions remains. Practicing active listening is fundamental. Truly listen to what others have to say without planning your response while they speak. Learning to end discussions respectfully is a valuable skill. If you see that the discussion isn't leading anywhere, it's appropriate to say something like, it seems we're too emotional to resolve this now. Can we revisit this later? Maintaining composure under pressure shows maturity and control, admirable traits that can transform the outcome of family conflicts. How have you managed to stay calm in a recent family discussion? Which techniques did you find most effective? Leave your thoughts in the comments. Setting boundaries with overprotective parents Having overprotective parents can seem like a disguised blessing. While their intentions are often based on love and care, overprotection can paradoxically hinder the development of the independence and self-confidence needed to navigate the adult world. Therefore, setting healthy boundaries is crucial for cultivating a balanced and respectful relationship. The first step is recognizing overprotective behaviors without harsh judgment. Understanding that these actions usually come from a place of love and concern can help approach the situation with empathy. When communicating your needs, using reverse psychology can be an effective strategy. Acknowledge and appreciate their concern, showing that you value their care but need space to grow. For example, you might say, Mom, Dad, I really appreciate how much you care about me, and it makes me feel very loved. However, I think now is a good time for me to start taking on more responsibilities to better prepare for the future. I'd like to discuss how we can adjust some of our arrangements. Establishing clear boundaries is essential. Be specific about which behaviors you think need to change and why. It's important to be honest and direct, but also respectful. Explain how overprotection affects your ability to make decisions and learn from your own mistakes. Reaffirming your love and gratitude while maintaining a firm stance is a powerful way to balance firmness with affection. This shows that you're not rejecting your parents, but asking for their support to grow as an individual. Avoid unnecessary confrontations by choosing the right time to talk, preferably when everyone is calm and willing to listen. Using phrases that show appreciation, such as, I know you want the best for me, and your opinion is very important, can help soften the conversation without giving in to control. Finally, remember that setting boundaries is an ongoing process. You may need to reaffirm your point several times until a new balance is found. Patience and constant communication are keys to this process. Now I'd like to ask you a reflective question. What has been the most significant change you've experienced in setting boundaries with your parents? Share your thoughts in the comments. Dealing with relatives who always play the victim. Relatives who frequently adopt the victim role can create a family environment loaded with negative emotions and unnecessary conflicts. This victim mentality often not only emotionally drains those around, but also hinders the development of healthy relationships. Understanding how to deal with this effectively is crucial for maintaining harmony and mental health for all involved. Recognizing these behaviors is the first step. A victim relative often blames others for their misfortunes, refuses to take responsibility for their actions, and seems to be constantly involved in drama. By identifying these patterns, you can begin to formulate strategies to deal with them without feeding into the victim cycle. Using reverse psychology, showing empathy without reinforcing the victim behavior is a subtle and effective approach. For example, 
when a relative complains about a situation, instead of agreeing or feeding the complaint, you can say, that seems really difficult. What do you think you could do to improve this situation? This shows understanding, but also encourages the person to seek solutions rather than fixate on the problems. Encouraging a positive and self-sufficient attitude is essential. Shifting the focus from complaints to solutions can help the individual see that they have the power to change their circumstances and improve their life. This can be done through conversations that explore alternatives and options to overcome difficulties constructively. Maintaining objectivity in your responses helps avoid being emotionally sucked into the drama. Clear, concise responses focused on facts can help keep the conversation productive and free from exaggerated emotions. Additionally, it's important to create an environment that promotes self-esteem and self-confidence, not just for the victim relative, but for all family members. Encouraging activities that strengthen the sense of competence and independence can be beneficial for everyone. Protecting your mental health is vital. This might involve limiting time spent in draining discussions or setting clear boundaries about what will be discussed. Remember that taking care of yourself is not selfish, but a necessity for maintaining a healthy relationship. I'd like to ask you, how have you managed to support a relative who tends to play the victim without allowing it to affect your own emotional health? Share your experiences and strategies in the comments. Responding to emotional manipulation. Emotional manipulation is a subtle yet deeply invasive form of interpersonal control. Often, it hides under the guise of concern, affection or intimacy, making it challenging to identify and respond appropriately without compromising valuable relationships. However, establishing an effective defense is crucial to protect your autonomy and emotional well-being. The first step in dealing with emotional manipulation is recognizing the signs. Manipulators frequently use guilt, shame or fear to persuade others to do what they want. They may also alternate between warmth and coldness, offering affection as a reward for compliance and withdrawing it as punishment. Using reverse psychology can be a useful tool here. When faced with attempts at manipulation, acknowledging the manipulator's feelings without giving in to their demands shows that you are empathetic but not vulnerable. For example, if someone says, you only care about yourself, you never think of others, you can respond, I understand that you feel this way, but I know that balancing my needs with those of others is important to me. Maintaining a firm and confident stance is essential. Responding without hesitation and with conviction can deter future attempts at manipulation, as it shows that you are not easily shaken. Avoiding impulsive reactions helps keep the conversation rational and focused, reducing the manipulator's ability to use your emotions against you. Reinforcing your own autonomy and value is vital. Remember your achievements and your ability to make independent decisions. Keeping a gratitude or achievement journal can help strengthen your self-esteem and reaffirm your emotional independence. Establishing clear boundaries is crucial. Make it clear what is acceptable and what is not in your interactions. When someone crosses these boundaries, be assertive in reaffirming them. This might involve directly stating that certain behaviors or words are unacceptable. Additionally, seeking emotional support from friends, family or professionals can provide the perspective and validation needed to manage manipulative situations. Sharing your experiences with others can also lessen the emotional burden of these interactions. Finally, Valuing relationships based on respect and reciprocity strengthens your social circle and offers a healthy contrast to manipulative dynamics. Surrounding yourself with people who respect your autonomy and mutuality enriches your life and reaffirms your self-worth. Reflective question, how have you dealt with a situation of emotional manipulation and what did you learn from that experience? Share your stories and insights in the comments. Turning negative comparisons into personal motivation. 
Living under the shadow of negative comparisons can be extremely challenging. When we are constantly measured against others, whether in the family, professional or social realm, our self-esteem and motivation can suffer. However, with the right strategies, it is possible to turn these comparisons into a drive for personal growth and self-acceptance. First, it is crucial to recognize when comparisons are being made. Often they can be subtle or even internalized, part of an internal dialogue that constantly evaluates and criticizes. By identifying these moments, you can start to challenge them productively. Using reverse psychology to turn comparisons into internal motivation is a valuable technique. For example, if someone points out how a colleague is more efficient or successful, instead of feeling diminished, you can use this as a stimulus to assess and improve your own skills. Ask yourself, what qualities do I admire in this person that I can develop in myself? Reinforce your qualities and abilities by recognizing your strengths and successes. Everyone has a unique journey with distinct talents and capabilities. Focusing on your qualities helps build a solid foundation of self-confidence and minimizes the impact of external comparisons. Setting personal goals that reflect your values is fundamental. Define objectives that make sense to you and align with your passions and aspirations, not with external expectations. This helps keep the focus on your individual progress instead of competing with others. Avoiding the game of comparisons is essential. Instead of constantly measuring yourself against others, concentrate on your own growth and progress. This is not only mentally healthier, but also more sustainable in the long term. Practicing daily gratitude can shift your perspective, making you value what you have, rather than lament what you lack. Keeping a gratitude journal or simply taking a moment each day to reflect on the good things in your life can strengthen emotional resilience, engage in activities that promote your personal growth, whether learning a new skill, dedicating yourself to a hobby, or participating in groups and communities that share your interests. These experiences enrich your life and expand your sense of self-efficacy, celebrate your personal achievements, no matter how small they may seem. Every step towards your goals is a victory and deserves recognition. This strengthens the notion that your worth is not in how you compare to others, but in how you advance concerning yourself. Reflective question. How have you transformed a negative comparison experience into a catalyst for your personal growth? Share in the comments. Resolving conflicts with in-laws or other family members. Conflicts with in-laws or other family members are not only common, but can also be intensely challenging, given the complexity of emotions and loyalties involved. Navigating these turbulent waters requires tact, understanding, and a strategic approach that values mutual respect and the pursuit of harmony. The first step in resolving these conflicts is to approach them calmly and rationally. Inflamed emotions can quickly escalate misunderstandings into larger disputes. Taking deep breaths and approaching the conversation with a serene mindset can help keep the discussion productive and free of unnecessary escalations. Using reverse psychology can be a helpful tool in this context. By demonstrating that you value others' opinions while maintaining your position, you not only preserve everyone's dignity, but also open the door to more creative and acceptable solutions for all. For example, you might say, I understand your point of view and see its merit. However, I'd like to explore how we can find a middle ground that works for both sides. Establishing clear boundaries is crucial. Define what is acceptable and what is not in your interactions, communicating these boundaries respectfully but firmly. This not only protects your autonomy, but also teaches others how you expect to be treated. Practicing active listening is essential. Showing that you are genuinely interested in understanding others' concerns and feelings can transform the dynamic of the conflict. Listen without interrupting, nod in acknowledgement, and respond in ways that reflect your understanding of the issues discussed. 
Maintaining open and honest communication helps build mutual trust and respect. Be transparent about your feelings and expectations. This not only clarifies your position, but also encourages others to do the same. Using humor and empathy to diffuse tense situations can relieve pressure and introduce a lightness that facilitates conflict resolution. A timely joke or a light-hearted comment can remind everyone that, despite the differences, there is an underlying relationship and affection that everyone values. Involving your partner in the discussions is fundamental, especially in conflicts with in-laws. This not only ensures that you are both on the same page, but also strengthens your unity as a couple in the face of external challenges. Focusing on the overall well-being of the family can help redirect the discussion to what really matters, the health and happiness of everyone. This can serve as a powerful reminder that, in the end, everyone is seeking the best for the family. Reflective question. How have you resolved a seemingly insurmountable family conflict? And what did you learn from that experience? Share your insights in the comments. Dealing with unrealistic expectations from family members. Unrealistic expectations imposed by family members can create immense pressure, affecting not only your emotional well-being, but also your interpersonal relationships. The key to handling these expectations is to recognize them, manage them healthily, and maintain clear communication about your capabilities and limits. The first step is to identify when family members' expectations are unrealistic or disproportionate to your current abilities. This may involve an honest assessment of your skills and life situation, as well as an understanding of the demands being placed upon you. Using reverse psychology can help manage these expectations calmly and effectively. For example, if a family member expects you to always be available to help, regardless of your own responsibilities, you might say, I really want to be there for you as you wish, but to help effectively, I also need to take care of my own obligations. Let's find a balance that works for both of us. It's essential to explain your capabilities and limitations openly and honestly. Set realistic goals with your family members, explaining what you can reasonably achieve. This can include setting clear expectations about what you can and cannot do, helping to align their perceptions with reality. Reinforcing your self-esteem is crucial. Remember your achievements and capabilities. Doing so can help strengthen your resilience against external pressures and cultivate an internal sense of worth that does not solely rely on the approval or expectations of others. Using phrases that show your commitment within reason reaffirms your desire to support your family while also protecting your space and personal needs. This demonstrates your willingness to contribute without overwhelming yourself. Engaging in activities that promote your personal and professional growth is a way to affirm your independence and demonstrate, through actions, how far your capabilities can take you. This not only fosters your own development, but can also help adjust others' expectations as they see your progress and dedication. Learning to say no is perhaps one of the most important skills. It is not just a word, it is a complete statement that respects your limits and priorities. Knowing when and how to say no can prevent resentment and unnecessary stress. Value your own achievements, whether or not they meet others' expectations. Celebrating your successes, no matter how small, builds a foundation of self-confidence and contentment. Reflective question. How have you dealt with a situation where you had to adjust or reject unrealistic expectations from a family member? Share your experiences in the comments. Transforming constructive criticism into personal growth. Constructive criticism is a disguised gift, offering valuable insights for personal and professional growth. However, receiving it can be challenging especially if we are not prepared to distinguish between constructive and destructive criticism. The key to transforming criticism into growth 
lies in the ability to actively listen, reflect on the feedback, and act positively. Firstly, it is essential to learn to differentiate between constructive and destructive criticism. Constructive criticism is generally specific, solution-oriented, and delivered in a way that respects the person's dignity. On the other hand, destructive criticism tends to be vague, emotionally charged, and often aims to diminish rather than help. Using reverse psychology to express gratitude for constructive criticism might seem counterintuitive, but it is a powerful way to transform potential defensiveness into openness to learning. For example, when receiving feedback on a presentation, instead of feeling attacked, you might respond with, thank you for pointing that out. I hadn't realized I could do it that way, and I'll consider your suggestions to improve. Reflecting on how the criticism can help in your development is the next step. Take time to truly think about the feedback received. How does it apply to your work or behavior? Are there truths in what was said that you can use to grow? Setting action plans based on the criticism received is crucial. Decide how you can practically implement the suggestions. This might involve setting specific goals, seeking additional resources, or even requesting regular follow-up on your progress. Reinforcing your internal motivation is important for maintaining the momentum of continuous improvement. Remember the reasons you want to improve, whether they are professional or personal, and keep these motivations in mind as you work in response to the feedback. Engaging in activities that promote your growth can also help internalize and practice what you have learned from the criticism. This might include workshops, new projects, or challenging tasks that test your skills in new ways. Maintaining an open and receptive mindset to change is essential. See each criticism as an opportunity to improve rather than a personal attack. This attitude not only facilitates personal growth, but also contributes to an environment where feedback is valued and sought after. Reflective question. What has been the most valuable constructive criticism you have received and how did it impact your personal or professional development? Share your stories in the comments. Facing passive-aggressive comments. Passive-aggressive comments can be subtle, but their impact on interpersonal relationships is often profound and destabilizing. These comments can arise in any context, from family interactions to the workplace, and dealing with them requires a mix of tact, understanding, and emotional resilience. First, it is important to recognize the signs of passive-aggressive communication. These comments might manifest as compliments that actually contain a veiled criticism or obligations expressed indirectly, leaving a sense of guilt or inadequacy. Identifying these patterns is the first step in deciding how to respond effectively. Using reverse psychology can be a useful tool in responding to passive-aggressive comments. For example, if someone says, well, you finally managed to finish the project, didn't you? Implying slowness or laziness, you might calmly respond with, yes, I'm pleased with how it turned out, thanks for noticing. This response not only neutralizes the provocation, but also reaffirms your confidence in the quality of your work. Avoiding emotional reactions is crucial. Responding emotionally can encourage more passive-aggressive comments as the aggressor sees that they have managed to affect you. Keeping calm and responding neutrally disarms the underlying aggression and shows that you are not easily disturbed. Using phrases that diffuse the situation can help keep the conversation in more positive territory. Phrases like, it seems like there's something more behind that comment. Would you like to talk more about it? Can pave the way for a more open and less defensive discussion. Reinforcing your self-confidence is also an important part of dealing with passive-aggressive comments. Remember your skills and successes and do not allow these comments to undermine your self-esteem. Focusing on constructive conversations and creating an environment of open and honest communication is fundamental. 
This not only promotes healthier relationships, but also discourages the use of passive-aggressive communication. Engaging in activities that promote your personal well-being and maintaining a positive mindset are essential. Activities like meditation, physical exercise, and hobbies you love can improve your emotional health and help you better cope with stress. Finally, learning to let go of minor negative comments is a vital skill. Not every comment deserves a battle, and knowing when to ignore can be just as important as knowing when to respond. Reflective question. How have you dealt with a passive-aggressive comment recently, and what did it teach you about your own emotional responses? Share your experiences in the comments. Using humor to diffuse tense situations. Humor is an extraordinary tool that can transform tense atmospheres into moments of lightness and connection. In family or friend contexts, where tensions can naturally arise due to differences in opinions or daily stress, Knowing how to use humor appropriately can be key to maintaining a harmonious environment. Identifying the right moment to introduce humor is essential. Pay attention to signs that tension is rising. Perhaps voices are getting louder or there is an uncomfortable silence. These are moments when a dose of humor can change the direction of the interaction. Using reverse psychology here, involves transforming a situation that could escalate into something that relaxes everyone involved. For example, if a heated debate about a sensitive topic is starting, you could interject with something like, well, at least we're not arguing about whether pineapples belong on pizza, right? Keeping humor light and respectful is crucial. The goal is to diffuse tension, not to offend someone or minimize their feelings. Avoid sarcasm or humor that could be interpreted negatively. Jokes involving self-deprecation or common everyday situations are often safe and effective for softening the mood. Using timely jokes or funny comments can instantly change the energy in a room. For example, if you notice a discussion becoming too serious, you might say, and here I thought my biggest decision today would be choosing between coffee or tea. Reinforcing the importance of a positive attitude through humor also helps build emotional resilience within the group. Laughing together not only relieves momentary stress, but also strengthens bonds by creating shared memories of joy and lightness. Creating an environment where humor is seen as a tool for decompression is important. This encourages everyone to use humor healthily and constructively, which can significantly improve the quality of daily interactions and relationships. Learning to use humor to improve relationships and diffuse conflicts is a valuable skill. It allows people to communicate effectively, even in stressful situations, and teaches everyone to appreciate lightness and human connection amidst challenges. Reflective question. When have you used humor to diffuse tension? And how did it affect subsequent interactions with the people involved? Share in the comments. Strengthening positive relationships in the family. Positive family relationships are fundamental to the emotional and psychological well-being of all family members. They serve as a foundation of support, love and understanding, especially during the most challenging moments in life. Strengthening these bonds not only improves the quality of family life, but also enriches the individual experiences of each member. First, it is important to identify the family members with whom you already have a healthy relationship. Recognize the characteristics of these relationships, such as mutual respect, trust, and the ability to share both good and bad times. This identification is crucial to understanding what works well and can be expanded to other family relationships. Using reverse psychology can be an effective strategy for reinforcing these bonds. For example, if a family member is known for their sense of humor, you can lightly express how this humor is essential for keeping the family's spirits up, encouraging even more of this positive trait. Engage in joint activities that everyone enjoys. This can be something as simple as regular family dinners, 
game nights, outdoor outings or shared hobby projects. These activities not only create valuable memories, but also strengthen bonds by sharing positive experiences. Maintaining open and honest communication is crucial. Encourage conversations where everyone can express their thoughts and feelings without fear of judgment. This includes discussing not only joys, but also concerns and challenges, ensuring everyone feels heard and valued. Value others' opinions by showing interest and consideration for their viewpoints. This helps build mutual respect, vital for any healthy relationship. When people feel their opinions are valued, they are more likely to actively participate and contribute positively to the family dynamic. Regularly reinforce the positive aspects of these relationships. Talk about family members' qualities and achievements. Creating an environment where such accomplishments are openly celebrated with enthusiasm. This not only boosts individual self-esteem, but also strengthens group cohesion. Keep a positive mindset, even in the face of conflicts. Approach disagreements with a mindset of peaceful and respectful resolution, seeking to understand before being understood. This shows a commitment to the family's well-being above individual needs. Reflective question. How have you contributed to strengthening relationships in your family? And what positive impacts has this had on your life and others? Share your experiences in the comments. Taking care of yourself in toxic family environments. Living in a toxic family environment can be deeply draining and harmful to your mental and emotional health. Recognizing this toxicity and adopting proactive strategies to take care of yourself are essential steps for preserving your well-being and fostering a healthier, happier life. The first step is recognizing when an environment becomes toxic. This can be evidenced by constant criticism, manipulation, disrespect or neglect. Being aware of these signs is crucial for starting to take protective measures. Using reverse psychology in a toxic family context might mean, for example, turning a criticism into a moment of positive self-reflection. When someone points out a flaw, instead of internalizing the criticism, you can use it as a reminder of your capabilities and strengths, or even express gratitude for opportunities for personal growth. Establishing clear and healthy boundaries is fundamental. Define what is acceptable and what is not in terms of treatment by other family members. Communicate these boundaries firmly and calmly. For example, you might say, I understand you have your opinions, but when they are expressed in this way, I feel disrespected. We need to find a healthier way to communicate. Engaging in activities that promote your physical and emotional well-being is another vital strategy. This can include physical exercise, hobbies that bring joy, or even therapy and support groups. These activities not only help maintain your mental health, but also provide a healthy escape from the tensions of the family environment. Maintaining a support network outside the family is equally important. Friends, counselors, or even colleagues can offer the necessary emotional support to help you see the situation from a different and more objective perspective. Reinforce your self-esteem through positive affirmations and reminders of your qualities and achievements. Use meditation and relaxation techniques to manage stress and remain calm in adverse situations. Creating a safe personal space where you can retreat and recharge is essential. This space could be a room, a special corner of the house, or any place you associate with peace and tranquility. Learning to say no without feeling guilty is an important skill. This involves recognizing that your mental health and well-being are priorities and that you have the right to refuse demands or interactions that compromise this. Finally, maintaining a positive mindset and visualizing a better future can help sustain hope and motivation. Remember that you have the power to shape your own life and that every step to take care of yourself 
is a step towards that better future. Reflective question. How have you managed to set boundaries in a toxic family environment and what changes have you noticed in your life after taking these measures? Share your experiences in the comments to help others who might be going through similar situations. May you all stay with the Creator.